Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. I am sitting right next to my Pro 1000, which has been set up with the ink level sensor system. All 12 channels have been installed. I still have a couple of channels that have to be brought up to the empty condition though. And once that happens, this is of course going to take place as I continue to print. Once that happens, I press the button located below the power button for five seconds and that will disable that chip from further ink monitoring. In other words, it will not show levels any longer. That allows you to refill your cartridge and continue printing happily. And now at that point, you're going to rely on these lights coming on to warn you when a cartridge has reached about 20% from empty. In other words, ready to be refilled. That's actually a little bit more accurate than the low warning that you normally get with your untampered system, if you will. But in order to make this easy, easy to live with, you're going to have to possibly modify your cartridges. And you could, of course, you can refill them using the pressure or vacuum method, which requires multiple squeezings of ink to pressurize and depressurize and so forth. And yeah, there are videos that show you how to do that, especially Ink Owl and also Precision Colors has videos. But you know, the best and easiest method is to simply have a hole into which you can then deliver the required volume of ink that you will need to top off the cart back to its full level and that is 80 milliliters of ink. So normally what will happen, it will be warned around 20 ml left, maybe a little bit less, but safe enough for you to maybe continue printing one day, and then at your leisure, you can then go ahead and top it off. So what we need to do is we're gonna drill a hole, now either on the left or the right, and the way you can determine that is to figure out which are your six left colors, in other words, in this case, it will be photo magenta, red, cyan, photo gray, matte black, and photo black. And then on the right, blue, chrome optimizer, gray, yellow, magenta, and photo cyan. And the reason I say this is because the left six cartridges, it's just easier to route those cables to the left. And so in order to do that with a little bit more efficiency, you would need to mount your sensor on the left side of this little facet. The back of the cartridges have two facets. It's not flat all the way across. It's actually like this. And so you might want to then drill the hole on this side, on the right side, the right upper right corner, and mount the sensor on the left facet. And then on the ones that are sitting on the right side of things, the, the right six cartridges, you can then do the opposite. Install on the right and drill the holes on the left. So let's go ahead and begin to do that. I'm going to bring the camera closer. I decided to do this with a hand drill just to show you guys and gals out there that is not that difficult. If you do things correctly, you should not have a problem. I normally buy these straight razors from Amazon or eBay. They're very handy. Also, the plugs that you will use ultimately are available in two types. And one is the ones with the tab that are also color coded and just the plain white ones. I'll show you all of that close up in a second. The white ones have a softer compression index. The tab ones are very, very dense and a little bit more difficult to install on a 5 30 seconds drilled hole. So I tend to kind of gravitate toward the regular white ones. And I'll show you all of that close up as I stated earlier. So let's go ahead and bring the camera closer. I'm going to proceed to demonstrate the method that I would use. If you just simply have a hand drill, you're going to need a special bit to do this one regular one, and then a special bit to do this final 
drilling to the correct diameter. That is a plastic drilling bit, and it is really meant for hard plastics such as acrylics and plexiglass, but it will do a fairly good job on a cartridge such as this. So let's bring the camera up close and we'll begin the demonstration. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. We have our cartridge. We're going to need an awl, and that is a very pointy tool. Basically, you can buy these at any hardware store. You're gonna need a razor blade. You're gonna do that to clean up the hole a little bit later. The plug that I stated, one of them is the little white type of flat type plug, and then the color-coded ones with the tab. And these are a little bit more difficult to install than these. I prefer these because they actually compress a lot more. Once I mark the hole position, I'm going to drill it with a smaller drill bit. I'm going to start off with a smaller drill bit, and I have that already mounted on my drill. The golden looking drill on the left, that is for metal, and the cutting edges are actually very um, low angle, and they do not do a good job on plastic. So I am using my plastic drilling bit which has a more acute cutting edge to it. That will give us a cleaner hole, a cleaner result, and a much accurate round hole onto which this plug can seal perfectly well. So, like I said, the six cartridges on the left should have the sensor mounted on this facet, the hole for refilling on the right corner. Left corner, right corner. The six colors that are located on the right side of the panel will be the opposite. We'll have the hole drilled here on the left and the sensor mounted on the right. So the ones located on the left, the first six, will have the sensors on the left side and the holes drilled on the right side. And again, the opposite would be with the second set of six cartridges located on the right. Hole on the left, sensor on the right again it's just to make the installation and the cable management a little bit more uh, neat it is not necessarily something you have to do so anyway since chrome optimizer lives on the right side of the six cartridges we're going to go ahead and mark our location right on the corner so it's always going to be on the corner that's just a really good place to do this and just press rotate just make a little mark that's all you're going to do just something for the drill to begin to drill on right there so as i said i have a smaller drill we're going to do a what they refer to as a pilot hole it's a very small drill bit and let me see let me angle this correctly so that you can see what i'm doing we're going to locate the tip of the drill right on that little hole that we created, that little depression. Let me see if I can do this so you can see what I'm doing right here. And we're gonna to begin to drill very slowly. If you notice, the drill is not moving around because it found that little depression you made with the awl. Increase the RPM a little bit and begin to apply some pressure. And there we go. We're beginning to see some shavings being created. You can stop, take a look. Yeah, we have progress. Again, take your time, folks. You don't need to do this like I would normally would do this. I have a drill press. I have a milling machine. I can mount these cartridges on a jig and do this all day long. That may be something you don't have. Of course, if you feel more comfortable doing it this way, you're free to do that. I don't have a problem holding it with my hand. We're going to go ahead and press in. Finished drilling that pilot hole. As you see, a little chip just fell out. By the way, these are reverse helix drills, so they're gonna pull the chips out, actually. So don't worry too much about that. So let's take a look at our progress. Okay, we're making a nice depression. And again, I'm doing this super, super slow for you guys. Increase the RPM a little bit. Apply some pressure. This area of the cartridge has a lot more plastic, so we need some internal surface area to allow that plug to really seal we want it to seal 
Okay, and we are in. All right. So now what we would do, let me put my drill aside here. We got the hole drill. Get rid of all of those little shavings. Everything is out. In other words, there's a little bit of a dimple sticking out as well. So you're going to take your blade. See it? And you're just going to clean that up. So it just creates like a little raised area. So I just basically removed a little donut of plastic. Let me show you that. You see that? That's it. Now you have a very nice and clean starter hole. So now we will install the final drill, which is the 5 30 seconds of an inch drill. Put this aside. Bring my... There it is. Make sure that you have it nice and centered. Spin it. It's spinning through. No wobbles. We'll repeat the same thing. It's going to be a lot easier this time because we've already created a smaller hole. So even if that hole had been slightly inaccurate, it doesn't really matter because now we're gonna true it up with the 5 30 seconds inch drill. If you do this from the beginning with just a 5 30 seconds inch drill and you make a mistake, it's too late, that's it. So start with a smaller drill diameter and then proceed with the final drill size. Make sure your drill is perpendicular to the cartridge and begin to drill very slowly. It's going to be very quick. And that's it. And pull it out. That's it. We are done. We'll proceed to clean it up again in case there's any kind of raised bits of plastic. And yeah, there is. I got another little donut of plastic. And... Make sure that is, in fact, you can take your awl and just burnish that little area, burnish the edges of the hole, like so. This plastic is rather soft. It is not rigid and hard like plexiglass. So you are going to have slight microscopic deformation of that hole. Now we take our, our plug and insert it in place. And it is a nice tight fit okay that is all you have to do this cartridge now is ready for pretty much instant refilling the minute that light is triggered you remove the sensor the feeder that tells the printer that you have opened this lid push whatever cartridge you have to exchange in unlock it bring it out carefully because again you have these cables attached and then you're going to hold it in this orientation like so with the cable attached. You don't want to disconnect that sensor. You want to leave it attached. Remove the plug. You have your syringe with, say, 60 ml of ink. Make sure it's the correct color and insert it at the ink because the sensor is calibrated to actually be triggered when you have a little bit less than 20 ml. That's what I have been told. Mine are calibrated to about 20, 21, 22 ml. But his will be calibrated slightly less lower volume. So you will have enough space to safely add 60 full ml of ink without a danger of a spillover. You do not want to have a spillover. It won't harm anything, but it makes a mess. So we want to make everything simple for you the user again i am i have taken probably five times longer than this takes to actually perform so be aware of that so once you fill it up with ink insert that plug back in make sure it's nice and tight and pop it back in insert the defeater back in the correct position and that will tell the printer that you have actually closed the door when of course you have not done so so that is about it. Let me show you what the other plugs fit and is really, really hard to insert because the compression factor is a lot, a lot stiffer. You see that? I cannot insert that plug in there. And I don't want to create a larger hole just to be able to insert this plug. So we'll just stick with the clear ones. You can get these from Precision Colors. You can get these from Rick Johnson. 
as well. The person that modifies and flushes the Pro 100 CLI 42 cartridges and also is servicing now the Pro 200 as well. So again, all you need is a set of plugs, 12 of them, and as you go, one at a time, you can modify the cartridge by drilling it and getting it ready, in other words. So wait until it is empty before you do this. It reaches empty, it is declared empty. Press the button to disable ink monitoring, pop it out. You can have it out of the printer, it's not gonna hurt anything. Hopefully you have began to consider installing the sensor system, drill it, fill it. The first time you do that, of course, you're gonna add 80 full ml of ink because the cartridge is going to be completely empty. So you start off the first time you refill with 80 ml and then once you have the sensors attached, then you can just add 60 from that point onward and you'll be all set. All right, folks, so let me go over this one more time very quickly for you. You have cartridges that are going empty. You disable the chip. You remove the cartridge using an awl. You make a little dimple. You start with a much smaller drill. This is a 16th of an inch diameter drill. Create that pilot hole first, then install your 5/32nd plastic cutting drill bit. Proceed with that one. Of course, you have also cleaned up the ridges that it creates when you drill on soft plastic with a razor blade. You need to do that. That way your plug will fit nice and tight. And then after it is done drilling, you can go ahead and burnish the edges like I just did with the side of the awl like that. It's a very shiny, hard metal. So you can go ahead and burnish those edges that will make any kind of a rough edge, which of course, in this case, I don't think I got, but it'll smooth out things so that then you can insert that plug a lot easier. Remember, the plugs can be obtained from Precision Colors or Rick Johnson. Precision Colors site is a little bit more difficult to navigate. So what you do is this. You go to the Pro 100 tab and then Accessories or Parts, I believe the tab is. And there you will find the plugs or just buy them directly from Rick Johnson. That is it. You can pop that in after you top it off with 80 ml of ink and proceed to print even if you have not installed the ink level sensor system yet, okay? You gotta then kind of keep track of your weight. Empty as it is now is 32 grams. With ink, it'll be 112. So you can kind of keep track of your inks that way manually, but consider quickly getting the ink level sensor system because that's going to have your back. It's going to watch your back for you. From that point on, whether you have modified the cartridges yet or have nullified any of the chips yet, it doesn't matter. Install it. Install it. And then later you can go ahead and drill as you need. The minute that you go empty, drill it and fill it. Pop it back in. This little device right here, you will be provided with a template you can cut it out of any kind of cardstock you wish. And it just simply blocks the optical sensor and fools the printer into thinking that the door has been opened. You will see on your screen that the screen will go into cartridge change mode. When you are done topping off that particular cartridge, you pop it back in, insert the little defeater or fooler, I call it, and then the screen will go into normal printing mode because it believes you closed the door. Now you will be provided with cable management clips, six for the right, six for the left, for free. And those usually run about 25 cents each. So the two boards will also come pre-wired for you. So there is no worries about you possibly having a fear of you know, installing the wires correctly. What I mean by that is the power jumper from this board here, which is the one that receives direct power. Right here is the power cord. Then you have this connector here, which goes underneath and connects and brings power to the second board. 
that will already be pre-wired for you, which is another good thing that Precision Colors is providing us. All right, I hope this clears up any questions you may have. It is simple. I have had people tell me it is the simplest thing they have ever done. And it renders this printer. Gosh, I'm worried that there are not going to be many Pro 1000s in the next couple of years, possibly, because if I had to choose, I would have two of these, okay? Right now, I have a PA-100. I love that printer as well, and it gives me roll support. But really, with this system, and not having to ever buy chips any longer, and the ability to refill pretty much instantly without a mess, the ability to be able to choose whatever ink set I choose to use, and that's the key. Whatever I decide is best for me is what I choose, and be able to produce prints like this which are just fantastic. All right, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And of course, as always, happy printing, everybody, and happy refilling. And oh, baby, I love you, especially the way you are now. Bye-bye, everybody.